Now that it's winter and we're no longer really using the reverse cycle HVAC system since we're on our electric heat, I figured it's time to kind of tackle uh, replacing the hoses that are currently set up for the uh, HVAC um, raw water cooling loop. So if we look at where the water comes in, we have this seacock here, which is currently turned off. It's been off for a while um, since we haven't been using this um, HVAC pump system. But uh, if you watch some of my previous videos, you might uh, remember that uh, originally the hose back there where it bends after the uh, electric pump was kinked, resulting in relatively minimal water flow from the pump here through the um, loop in the HVAC system and then finally overboard. So what I did was I used a heat gun at one point to uh, get in there and warm up the tubing and then kind of bend it into a position that gave it less of a kink. It still has a slight kink though, so uh, I'd like to get that fixed as well. And you can also see that uh, this line here, um, since being used, has kind of warped and twisted a little bit, oddly enough. Not really sure what caused that. It might just be starting to break down over time. Um, we also have down here, there appears to be a very minimal leak. You can see the um, green there from the water coming off some of the uh, brass uh, and then going down into the bilge. So the sea cog's off, so it, the, any water that has been coming out has been from the actual uh, loop system for um, cooling or heating. And you can see there's a little bit of water down in the bilge. Uh, I'm not too sure what it's from. It does have a very darkish brown tint to it. So. Um, after I finish up working on some of this, I'll, uh, I'll wait till I drain this loop just because I'm sure some water will get down there. And then my plan is to also get that um, dried up and cleaned again. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Yeah, we can see a little bit of water coming out there. So as I mentioned, this is the old water that was still in the loop. And it's been there for probably about two months or so. So hopefully it doesn't smell too bad. But that's pretty much it. So I guess I'll take that out and then might as well... The sea strainer actually looks pretty good since we haven't really used it that frequently and everything probably died due to lack of oxygen. But um, I'll probably clean it out a little bit uh, just while I have it open. And so now that we got that off, I'm going to start by removing um, all these hose clamps. And you'll see that there's two hose clamps on uh, every um, ending point of a hose, and that's because generally you want two hose clamps on anything where water is coming in from outside the boat, um, just to have that double extra layer of safety. Now if you have something like uh, running a hose for instance from like the washer machine to a drain that's not super critical so generally I'll use one hose clamp on that but I'm going to go ahead and start taking uh, these off and kind of see what we got. Okay well I actually ended up slicing off the reinforced hose that was hooked on here and uh, it was so kind of old and uh, hard I, I couldn't even get it off the uh, get it off the little nipple there. So you can see here's the other end there. Um, this red tubing actually came off pretty easily. and uh, But I did find the source of the leak. You can see there is a crack right about there on the bottom portion of this housing here. So that is definitely where the water was leaking out of. So. Now that I've identified that, um, I'm just going to purchase a new uh, sea strainer housing. And I'm also planning to purchase, this is a um, opaque sea strainer, which doesn't really make much sense to me in my opinion. I don't know why you didn't make it opaque. Uh, but down there is a uh, clear one. So I'm going to purchase a version that has a clear housing. That way I can actually see what the sea strainer is doing. I'm also going to see if there's any sort of nifty way I can go from a right angle here to here. Maybe if somebody makes kind of like uh, pre-bent right angle uh, tubings. Just because it is very um, cumbersome to do something like this where you have a 
right angle nipple with like, you know, two inches of tubing and then another two inches of tubing. So you have a lot of failure points with all of the different hose clamps and plastic pieces and all that. So see what I can find online, but glad I identified that and looks like I have a good um, path forward. So I just got back from our local faucets boat supply and picked up a new sea strainer. So this is a uh, Groco WSB 500. So it has a um, quarter inch, or excuse me, half inch threaded input and output. And I also picked up two of these. So this is a quarter inch male threaded to a five eighths, uh, just a brass uh, nipple there. So what I'm gonna do is put some new plumbing tape on the nozzle here that comes from the seacock and then uh, essentially screw this on without the lid, uh, get it all nice and taut and tight on there, and then uh, kind of look and see how, if at all, this will work. I'm not sure if the right angle will um, work as I'm intending it to, so it would have to be out you know, relatively far, which I don't think is gonna be out nearly that far. Okay, there we have it. The sea strainer housing is now on. Always make sure you look at the directional flow on these since are designed to go one way so in this case we want the flow coming from this side going that way so you can see we've definitely made some progress there on connecting the <clears throat> little right angle um, connector between the C strainer and the pump however it turns out that during this I was trying to determine why I'm not able to get the water to cycle through the loop system and it turns out that I'm pretty sure that the pump is shot so you can see the pump there I have it hooked up temporarily to this tube and you can see I'm holding it up right now above the water line um, since the seacock is open right now and you can see that's kind of the uh, static water line level there. Now let me show you what happens when I turn it on and now of course I can only turn this on for a short period of time since the uh, reverse cycle um, heat system or, or cooling system um, cannot is not really supposed to run without water in it. Um, so I just run it for a very short period of time, but you'll see that uh, this is the um, basically the base level water line for the boat and this pump should be rated to get about two gallons per minute at uh, seven feet, which is pretty high and it really is only going up maybe from this point, maybe about two feet. So after investigating this pump a little bit further, it turns out it is manufactured by a company called Grundfoss or Grundfoss and it's actually designed to be a circulating pump for a uh, heat radiator system that you would have in your house and as a result I'm not sure about this specific model but most of the models that I found by this uh, manufacturer actually use kind of like a cast iron housing here which obviously is not a good choice for a saltwater application so I think, uh, you know, using it 24-7 <clears throat> while it was uh, this past summer, while it was hot out for the air conditioning, paired with the fact that it has sat for a while without being used with all that salt water inside it, leads me to believe is that is what caused the failure. So my plan moving forward is I'm going to purchase a new pump that's rated for continuous marine usage, um, looking specifically at March pumps. Um, they're relatively pricey, so probably about $350 for a 500 gallon per hour pump, but uh, we will be able to uh, use that for a saltwater application and it's more so designed for um, marine use. So for the time being, what I'm going to do is drain the, this pump out. I'm going to leave the seacock closed and I'm going to run the new tubing down there if I get the camera down there, there's the old tube. And this is the new one I was just using for um, the test. And uh, <clears throat> I'm not gonna run it completely. And obviously I'm not gonna connect it to the pump because the new pump's gonna have a totally different layout, but I'm at least gonna run that uh, tube so that by the time the new pump arrives, I'll have the new tube there and ready to be hooked up to the unit. So the first step with that is to remove the hose, which you can see down there, this hose right there. That's where the water comes from the pump and it passes through the coil there, and then this is where it leaves the coil and then goes out overboard. This hose, while it's old, completely fine, no kinks, and it's actually in relatively good shape, so no need to replace that. Uh, just need to replace 
the hose down there since that's the one that has the kink in it. There we have the old hose is off and it's now time to pull that one through and feed in the new hose. We have our fancy new hose in there. You can see connected right there in the center of the frame. That hose runs down underneath and under the electrical box there. And then through the aft part of the bilge, so you can see the new line there running forward, comes through here. The original one passed through in a uh, outlet that was down here, but uh, I figured I'd just pass it through this one for simplicity's sake. And then here's where our pump currently lies. Now, this is the old hose here. So you can see that it had a pretty significant kind of kink in it right there. And I did use the heat gun to soften it up and then try to straighten it out, but still uh, it was just relatively kinked and did not allow enough water flow to come through. And I think for the time being, I actually am gonna hook this connection here on. And that's because if we do heal under, uh, if we take, you know, take the boat out before I have the new pump system set up and have a relatively strong heal, this actually might bring water into the boat. Um, if we were to, heel on starboard there. The connection for the overboard is right about here. And if we were to heel pretty hard, we might actually be able to pull in water through this loop. And then essentially that would just dump out here, which is not good. It's essentially uh, creating a water inlet into the boat. So I'm gonna just put it on here and tie it off on that pump just so that in the event we do go sailing, we don't have to worry about uh, any water getting pulled into the boat uh, due to any heel we have. And here we have our new pump. So this is the March pumps. The LC3CPMD. So this is rated for 110 volts. So they make a 110 volt and also a 220 volt. Uh, also, uh, it's designed for 60 hertz, but it can also run at 50 hertz, which is always good if we ever end up somewhere that has a slightly different frequency on the power. So you can see the ratings there. And if you look at the chart, uh, it actually has some pretty good performance. So in terms of uh, head in feet, which for us isn't really gonna be that far, to be honest. If I had to guess, maybe three feet max. So we're gonna be able to get some pretty high flow coming through there, um, which will be good for the HVAC system. So it just comes with a little pigtails there, which is good. Uh, the cable's pretty long actually. I think it's what, it looks like almost like six feet long. So if you need to reach it relatively far, that is nice. Um, unfortunately, it does have uh, uh, inlets and outlets that I don't have connections for right now. So I will have to run to the local uh, Lowe's or Home Depot sometime tomorrow and pick up. Uh, this is a uh, three quarter inch uh, FPT and then a uh, one half inch MPT. The other cool thing is the pump is relatively modular. So according to things that I've read online, it's not, I wouldn't say super straightforward, but it's feasible to replace a part of the pump which is very nice to hear because this pump was uh, almost $400. It was about $370 for us. So if we do have an issue down the road, it's nice to know that we can purchase spare parts for it and hopefully repair it. Okay, it's time to start working on assembling our new pump with the proper brass fittings here. So unfortunately I went to the Home Depot and was unable to find a half inch female, which would connect this to 5 eighths hose barb. So what I did was I purchased a half inch female to 3 quarter inch female um, coupling and then purchased a 3 quarter inch male threaded um, piece there with the 5 eighths hose barb. So, what we're going to do is uh, the uh, oh, and for reference here, this is the uh, this is a three quarter inch uh, female inlet here. So uh, actually, I think it's the inlet. Yeah, this is the inlet. This is the outlet. I'm pretty sure. So basically, this is just going to go straight in like that, just like so. Pretty easy. And then what we're going to do with this guy 
he's going to come up here like this, and then that is going to go in there. Now, I might end up, uh, if they even make them, I'm not really sure, I don't know um, if it's due to size constraints or anything, why there weren't any uh, half-inch female to five-eighths um, hose barb, but because this does have technically an additional point of failure, which, you know, we'll try to minimize that as possible, but uh, what I'm going to do is get some Teflon tape wrapped up on these, on all the threads here, and get these screwed in. Uh, one kind of cool thing I did notice about this pump, which I believe I forgot to mention um, earlier on, is it has little rubber feet. So you can see the little rubber standoffs on the base plate there. Um, and that's actually pretty nice one, since I'm working on it, I won't scratch the table, but it also probably helps with noise reduction uh, when the pump is turned on, Those the, the noise and the vibration isn't passed into um, whatever component or portion of the boat that the pump is mounted to, uh, which is nice. So just a little bit of um, extra nicety to have. Okay, there we go. We are all connected. Got our trusty Teflon tape here, plumber's tape. Um, I didn't tighten these up super, super tight just because we are going into a nylon or some sort of um, plasticky uh, uh, threads here on both the male and the female. So you never want to over tighten and accidentally strip that plastic. So we'll, we'll go with just this, you know, basic a uh, little bit more than hand tightening, kind of see where we're at in terms of leakage, and then we can always adjust uh, as necessary. Um, once we actually get the water running through it and check for um, any leaks. Okay, so I've kind of templated out how I'm going to mount the water pump. So this is an old piece of wood that was used for the previous pump. And based off of uh, arrangements and placing it, I actually won't need to recut that hose down this way, the right angle there, as long as I mount it kind of in the bottom left-hand corner like this and then remount this piece of wood in a slightly different orientation uh, up against this portion of the hull. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drill these holes and at least get it set up. Um, in order for this piece of wood to be secured to all four corners though, I will also need to drill a hole while the pump is not mounted on here um, with the inlet kind of like sunk in like this on the back here. And that way, uh, the screw that I use will be flush with this surface of wood. So I'll mount the wood on there, and then mount the pump onto the wood, and it'll be nice and secure. Okay, we got it mounted on, and we did trace out. Sid helped me. She's doing a little bit of cooking up there right now. Say hi. Where is the garlic? Okay, we have our panel mounted now for the pump. And I've decided to hold off on mounting a third screw in there in the bottom left, um, mainly because it's really, really already pretty secure. Um, I, I, zero flex whatsoever. Um, plus it would complicate things uh, drastically to have to uh, drill a new hole in the fiberglass and then do all the countersinking and all that stuff. So I'm gonna hold off on that. That's my little catcher there. Catches the dust and stuff that falls down. But I'll go ahead now and actually get the pump mounted up on the, on the uh, plate there. Well, I d forgot to account for the additional distance that this plate would bring the pump off of the wall here. And because of that, we are now back to square one on our inlet hosing because the old right angle setup would not work. I'm kind of hopeful that a right angled brass fitting connected to the C strainer there should be at almost the perfect uh, distance um, this way kind of aft and forward to properly connect to the inlet of the pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw that in now and see how it lines up. All right, so we got our wires here. You can see this is this is the wire going to the control system for the um, HVAC, and this is the wire for the pump. So we just you know um, split them, and I'm going to connect them. So you can see the uh, finally got the pump mounted, and you can see the um, I ended up using that little right angle 
piece here, right angle brass um, barb, um, male one half inch to a five eighths barb. Um, heated this up with a heat gun so it was super, super flexible and was able to wiggle it on there um, and really get it torqued on. So um, it's very secure, it ain't going anywhere. And um, it's looking pretty solid. And we got the outlet hooked up right down here too. So we got that already. This is pretty much the last step before we're gonna go ahead and test it and see how it performs. So this just basically locks the wires in place on the uh, connectors when the crimper pinches them down. Okay, we are finally complete. We have our finished March pump. You can see I just finished crimping and heat shrinking the wire connections there. Um, I will do a final wrap of this with electrical tape uh, just to keep them all together so they're not, um, you know, spreading apart like that or, or whatever, get caught on things. So here's kind of a look at the total system. If I back up a little bit, we've got that seacock there, the sea strainer, and then the inlet goes into the pump. And then from there we have that big looped tube, which is the outlet, which then goes to the HVAC system, which is under the seat right there.